Hare Krishna. Good morning, everybody. Reading today from Srimad Bhagavatam. We're on the third canto. We're on chapter two, which is Remembrance of Lord Krishna. And, one of, and there's many famous verses in this chapter. And this is one of them. We're on text number 23. <coughs> <coughs> And one more time. Yeah, I have water, yeah. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Narayanam Namaskritya. Narayanam Namaskritya. We can say this together. Narayanam Namaskritya. Naram Chaivam Narotamam. Nevin Saraswatim Pyasam. Tato Jayam Udirayat. Nasta Prayeshu Abhadreshu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Shoke. Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan. Um, Nar Narayan Rishi, unto the Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the author, uh, the translator and commentator, by regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service unto the pure devotees. All that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed in loving service unto the personality of Godhead, who is praised by transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. And that is just what's happening with Uddhava here in this circumstance, because on being questioned by, my tra uh, by Vidura about the glories of the Lord, Uddhava first, his first reaction was he just went into a deep, deep trance. And, and meditation, Prabhupada indicates that he left this world. And then when he came back to the earthly plant plane, then he could remember the Lord. Because why? Because those that the remembrances of the Lord and whatever service we do to the Lord, it becomes an indelible impression on our mind, even though it might get covered over from time to time by the myriad distractions in this world, still it's there. It just has to be evoked. Okay, so text number 23. Aho bakiyam stanaka lakutam. Aho bakiyam stanaka lakutam. Aho bakiyam stanaka lakutam. Aho bakiyam stanaka lakutam. Jig hum saya pai yayad up. Yasad V Jigam Sayapayad Ap Yasad V Jigham Sayapa Yayad Ap Yasad V Jigam Sayapayad Ap Yasad V Lebhe Gatim Datruchitam Tatonyam Lebhe Gatim Datruchitam Tatonyam Lebhe Gatim Datruchitam Tatonyam Lebhe Gatim Datruchitam Tatonyam Kamba Dailum Sharanam Vrad Kamva dayalum sharanam vrajema. Kamva dayalum sharanam vrajema. Kamva dayalum sharanam vrajema. Kamva dayalum sharanam vrajema. Aho bakiyam stanaka lakutam. Aho bakiyam stanaka lakutam. Jigham saya paya yad apya sadvi. Jigham. Saya paya ya apya sadvi. Lebhe gatim da chuchitam tatonyam. Lebhe gatim da chuchitam tatonyam. Kamva dailum dayalum sharanam vrajema. Kamva dayalum sharanam vrajema. Please chant. 
Aho bakiyam stanakala kutam. Aho bakiyam stanakala kutam. Jigam saya payaya apyasadvi. Jigam saya payaya apyasadvi. Lebe getim datu chitam tatonyam. Lebe getim datu chitam tatonyam. Kambadaya lumshara. Some online participants. Good morning. Aho baki yam stana kala kutam. Aho baki yam stana kala kutam. Jikam saya paya rapya sadavi. Jikam saya paya yan apya sadvi. Lebe gatim da truchi tam tatonyam. Lebe gatim da truchi tam tatonyam. Kamva dayalum sharanam brajena. Kamva dayalum sharanam brajema. Aho bakiyam stanakala kutam. Aho bagiyam sana kala kutam. Jigham saya payayat apyasad hivi. Jigham saya payayat apyasad hivi. Lebe gatim datriu chitam tatonyam. Lebe gatim datriu chitam tatonyam. Kamva dayalum sharanam brajema. Kamva dayalum sharanam brajema. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Aho. Aho. Alas. Alas. Baki. Baki. The she demon Putana. The she demon Putana. Yam. Yam. Hum. Hum. Stana. Stana. Of her breast. Of West Kala, Kala, deadly, deadly, Kutam, Kutam, poison, poison, she comes, Saya, she comes, Saya, out of envy, out of envy, Apayayat, Apayayat, nourished, nourished, Api, Api, although, although, Asadvi, Asadvi, unfaithful, unfaithful, Lebe, Lebe, achieved, achieved, Gatim, Gatim, destination, destination, Datri Uchitam, Datri Uchitam, just suitable for the nurse, just suitable for the nurse, Tata, Ta, beyond whom, beyond whom, Anyam, Anyam, other, other, Kim, no, Kam, um, sorry. <laughs> Who else? Who else? Va, Va, certainly. Certainly. Dayalum. Dayalum. Merciful. Merciful. Sharanam. Sharanam. Shelter. Shelter. Rajema. Rajema. I shall take. Shall I take too? Shall I take. <laughs> 20. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So this is Uddhava speaking. He's talking to Vidura. And he's coming to the peak of his remembrance practically in, in, in appreciation of Krishna's qualities and mercy. So he says, alas, a whole, alas, how shall I take shelter of one more merciful than he who granted the position of, of mother to a she demon, Putana, although she was unfaithful and she prepared deadly poison to be sucked from her breast. Alas, how shall I take shelter of one more merciful than he who granted the position of mother to a she demon Putana, although she was unfaithful and she prepared deadly poison to be sucked from her breast? So, just a little bit comment on the verse in the Sanskrit. So, you see in the in the Sanskrit, you don't see any mention of Putana by name. So, Bucky, Bucky is her brother. Bakka Sura was her brother. So that's what it is, a whole Bucky Yam. So that's referring to Putana because she was the brother of Bakasura. So there was three in her family that I'm aware of. <laughs> there were three personalities, Bakasura, Putana, and who was the other? I can't remember. Was it Agasura? Someone, uh, there's another. I'm thinking Agasura. Yeah, there are. 
whoever the person is, sorry, I just thought of this. I didn't look it up previously, but that was her, that was her family and her, her association. <laughs> so it's not that she was just um, casually, I guess you could say, or randomly inimical to the Lord. She was in a, an association that was totally inimical to the Lord, to the, to the extent that Every one of uh, 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 both her brothers also tried to kill the Lord, and she's following in that footstep. And so, that when you think of that in relation to what Krishna did and how he granted her uh, mercy, so much mercy, then it makes it even more poignant the point, even more poignant. Uddhava is saying, Who's more merciful than Krishna? There's nobody more mercy, merciful than Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada will explain that in the purple. Here, Om Maginati Mirandasya, Jinanjana Salakaya, Chaksu Umilitam Jaina, Tasmai Shri Guruvenam Ha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but Srila Prabhupada very kindly forced open my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. Therefore, I beg for service at his lotus feet, life after life. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Here is an example of the extreme mercy of the Lord, even to his enemy. It is said that a noble man accepts the good qualities of a person of doubtful character, just as one accepts a nectar from a stalk of poison. In his babyhood, he was administered, administered deadly poison by Putana, the she-demon, who tried to kill the wonderful baby. And because she was a demon, it was impossible for her to know that the Supreme Lord even though playing the part of a baby was no one less than the same person, supreme personality of Godhead. So my tendency is, is I want to start talking right away, but I'll do my best to try to read the whole purport. So no, I, I need to get in that habit. I'll read the whole purport and then I'll do it again and start talking by Krishna's grace. And because of okay, uh, President his value as the Supreme Lord did not diminish upon his becoming a baby to please his devotee, Yasoda. The Lord may assume the form of a baby or a shape other than that of a human being, but it doesn't make the slightest difference. <laughs> he is always the same Supreme. A, <clears throat> a living creature, however powerful he may become by dint of severe penance, can never become equal to the Supreme Lord. Lord Krishna accepted the mother of Putana because she pretended, that's so important. She pretended to be an affectionate mother, allowing Krishna to suck her breast. The Lord accepts the least qualification of the living entity and awards him the highest reward. That is the standard of his character. Therefore, who but the Lord can be the ultimate shelter? Therefore, who but the Lord could be the ultimate shelter of everyone? It's not just Putana. Actually, you can see the similarities be between Putana's activities and my activities, because I'm just pretending to be a devotee. You know, it's not there deeply embedded in my heart, that that's what I want to do. But somehow, by Prabhupada's grace, I'm slightly attracted to the idea. And I do all of these things, dress like a devotee, put my tilak on, chant my rounds, and et cetera, et cetera. In that same guise, <laughs> pretending to be a devotee. But there's hope for us pretenders. That's what I want to say. There's hope for the pretenders that if we, and this is what Prabhupada would also stress this at various times and when people would, when the devotees would ask Prabhupada or question him, but Prabhupada, my heart, I'm doing these things, but my heart's not, my heart and my consciousness are not right there, totally there all the time. Prabhupada said, it's okay. Just do it. Just, just bow down. Although Prabhupada didn't say, just bow down, mister. It's the same, just the same inference is there. Just bow down. And gradually, by bowing down, by offering uh, prayers by offering your activities and your mind to the lotus feet of the Lord, then gradually it will come about. So this story of Putana, it's so attractive in, in that particular light. And this is what's how Uddhava is remembering her. He's remembering her and her good fortune 
to and the the person he's remembering the person and the source of her good fortune so that's our hope also in this kali yuga um in in one of his purports in the bhagavatam Srila Prabhupada talks about the living entities in kali yuga uh, the living entities in general he said and he says we are the burnt remnants of kali of entities in kali yuga we're at, you know we've been through you know the creation various cycles of the creation in various times and here we are yet again in another kali yuga the very end the winter season but it's not the it's not it's, it's simultaneously it's not the worst thing in the world it's we're in the most fortunate kali yuga because of lord chaitanya's appearance but because of krishna's appearance just a few thousand years ago and then just a few hundred years ago within the scope of our um time Lord Chaitanya's appearance. So we're in a very fortunate position. And then Srila Prabhupada's coming and bringing in and enlightening us and taking us out of the gutter and uh, bringing forth this wonderful Srimad Bhagavatam, which is described as, as brilliant as the sun and meant to give light to those in the darkness of Kali Yuga. So this example, back to uh, Putana's situation. So she took on the guise of a of a respectable person and <clears throat> um uh by that that mystic potency of being able to change shapes because many demoniac persons have mystic potency and they can change their shape at will so she changed her shape from her ugly uh witch like or rakshashi type body to a, a, a shape that was culturally accepted according to time and place, so, so that she, so a beautiful woman, so that she could have access to sleeping little baby Krishna, you know, and 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 even at a even at a time when Nanda Maharaj wasn't in the house, he was in he was in Mathura paying his taxes to Kamsa, trying to keep Kamsa pacified and uh, keep Krishna safe. And, and Putana slips in when he's out of town. Um, uh, and her plan, her plan was she knew the art of killing small babies. She knew that art and that was her favorite thing to do. Kill small babies and suck their blood. So she knew how to do that. So in this case, she... Um, had some deadly poison prepared on her nipple. And then as a beautiful young lady, mm, pretending to be overflowing with love for the newborn baby, she picks up Krishna and Krishna very um, submissively complies with the circumstance and just closes his eyes and he's totally relaxed and he's totally there willing to suck her breasts and accepting her loving mood. And that's what's talked about here when Prabhupada says, um, a noble person accepts the good qualities, a noble man accepts the good qualities of a person of doubtful character. So um, not for one millimeter, one love a mantra of a second was Krishna fooled by Putana's disguise because as the Paramatma within everyone's heart, he's knowing the, the heart of every living individual. individual. Um, and so he knew her heart, but he also <clears throat> um, saw past the dirt in her heart and appreciated the, the essence, sharam, the essence of her mood of offering her, her as that motherly offering to nourish the child with the, with the milk from her breast. That's what he accepted. He drank the milk from her breast. He drank the poison and he took out her life force all at the same time. But what he, but he <clears throat> wasn't left with a grudge. He didn't have a grudge. Oh, she tried to kill me. Let's let, let me teach her a lesson. Uh -huh. No, he, he was looking at the, the good quality there of thinking of him as a son. And there's, the backstory, which probably has been mentioned, but maybe not because this is the first verse that talks about Putana, so it might not have been mentioned so far. But Putana 
in a previous life, in a, in a, uh, she was there when um, Lord Vamana, the beautiful form of the, the Brahmachari, comes before um, Bali Maharaj to beg. He's just a little small Brahmachari, and he comes before Bali Maharaj to beg just three paces of land. Now, this is the situation when Bali Maharaj had already conquered all the three planetary systems and even displaced the demigods from their position. So he was by force ruling the whole universe. He had everything, well, he thought. He thought he had everything in his possession, which is what we also think too in illusion, right? We think this is my house. I have this car. I have this bank balance. I have this relationship. I have this and that. We're always forgetting. Oh no, nothing's mine. Everything belongs to Krishna. So Bali Maharaj was in that, that illusion big time also. And he's thinking everything in my possession I have and this little inexperienced boy is only asking for three paces of land as paced by his tiny little foot footprints, footsteps. So in that assembly, when Vamana enters the assembly, Putana's in the, Putana's there. And this time she's the brother, no, no, sister. She's the sister of, of Bali Maharaj. And when she sees Vamana and sees his beauty, she's immediately attracted. There's some little spark of attraction there. And so she thinks, oh, if I could have a son, if I had a son that, like that, as beautiful as that, I would just love to feed him my breast milk. That was her immediate reaction when she saw Vamana Dave. And then, as the pastime unfolds and Bali Maharaj grants to Vamana Dev, sweet little innocent Vamana Dev, the three paces of land that he is requesting, even though his spiritual master, it's just so interesting, all the little details and nuances of the story, even though his spiritual master, Sukracharya, advised Bali against giving charity to this person who was in the disguise of a Brahmin, Brahmachari, but actually Sukracharya could understand that he was actually Lord Vishnu. Don't give it to him, he'll, he'll be left with nothing. And in the back of Sukracharya's mind is, and if you're left with nothing, then who's gonna support me? Because Bali was supporting him. Not, and, and that's why we're just so grateful to Srila Prabhupada to put everything in proper perspective so that we can see, Oh, Krishna's the one. I might have this possession. I might be earning this amount of money. I might be whatever, whatever um, by the Lord's grace. But ultimately, everything belongs to Krishna. Even my, the strength of my endeavor belongs to Krishna. Okay, so, um, uh, so when Bali grants Vamana the, the three paces of land, and he immediately expands himself and in one step takes the whole, you know, universe and covers the upper planetary systems and the lower planetary system. And then he's thinking, well, where am I going to put my third foot? And Bali Maharaj still has, even though amazed by the, um, the activities of the Lord, he still is thinking that he has something that's his. So he thinks I'll offer my head, not realizing it's already his Krishna's head. So let's see the layers, the subtle layers of there. Okay, so when he when when he offers his head and Bali uh, Vamana puts his foot on his head, and then even then after accepting his head to rest his foot on, he still chastises Bali even more. He doesn't let up. He still chastises him and has him bound by the ropes of Varuna, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and um, humiliates him and defames him and everything. But the purpose isn't just the humiliation and the defamation. The purpose is bring him, bring him again in line, understanding that who's, who's the Supreme Lord and, and what's our relation with the Supreme Lord as servant to him. So when, when Bali's sister sees that aspect of the personality, of the, the uh, activities of the Lord, so then she has a different attitude which have you noticed sometimes happens to us also. One time we have one attitude and then another attitude comes up. Okay, so um, then she has a different attitude and she thinks if I had a son like that, I'd kill him. <laughs> so she had the two, the two contradictory mm, thoughts about the Lord, even in, in that previous 
pastime and that so then so it and as we can as i can only theoretically understand so it's the but the theory is or the the concept is is that the the activities of vamana and then the next act um the next uh, discussed activities of of krishna here in his pastimes in on the earth in, in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yasoda, it's not like there was a, the next day, then it, he's, he's manifesting himself as Krishna. There's a huge amount of time. And, uh, uh, and then there's the Krishna, uh, um, Krishna's um, pastimes on earth. And then there's Putana again. There she is again, the sister of Bali Maharaj, again there in a different cir circumstance and um, participating in a different way. So that also, that brings to mind our, our verses that we chant in before we start the Bhagavatam, where we say that um, any endeavor or um, any activities done in, in, in Krishna consciousness leave an indelible mark on the soul, an indelible mark. So the pastimes that she had, that Putana had in her, one of her previous, sojourns um, again the contact with the Lord she was fortunate enough she wasn't an ordinary person she was fortunate enough to again get that contact again and then come to what the final perfection so Krishna in this pastime he's seeing uh, Putana's mother like um, affection for him and that's what he's focusing in on and that we can see in our, when we, we do our introspective thought and see the state of our mind and consciousness and how our mind is always looking to position ourselves as superior to others. And in that position, you know, the other person might have some good qualities, but what I have is better or more valuable or whatever our thought process is. But still, um, it's brought, um, I kind of lost my thought pattern, What? why I was saying that. But yeah, but why was I saying that before that? It, it, started, it started with Krishna seeing the better qualities. Thank you, dear. Um, yeah, so he takes that, he takes that, um, hmm. he, yeah, yeah, he, his, his care, he's the source of that, of, of noble qualities. In other words, he's not um, thinking of different interactions he had with people and therefore, you know, wanting to um, chastise, punish this or that, or show, show them that he's the supreme personality of God and so that they'll be forced to submit. But actually he's totally, in a loving way, guiding us, and at the same time neutral, and at the same time simultaneously uh, concerned. When one turns to him, that he's um, that he's uh, giving the utmost guidance, so that the living entity who's struggling in this material world, trying to be happy without the Lord, to turn them turn that, that false conception around so that they can actually see, oh, I have a misunderstanding here. My small little misunderstanding that shaped my whole sojourn in the material world is that I'm more important than Krishna. And let me try to rectify that. And so he's doing it to us all the time, very mercifully, very kindly. And if we have that, if we can you know, develop that little attitude of, thanking the Lord in the good times and thanking the Lord in the, the, the uh, times when our ego's just gotten a little uh, peaked or, or blow to it, then, then, that, that, then that's so um, uh, beneficial for us. So another thing that struck me in that purport was the sentence that, in a couple of sentences down when Prabhupada starts to talk about how Putana, because she had that demoniac mentality, she couldn't see that that little baby in front, she just saw a little baby and was thinking that that little baby had just what? The potencies of a little baby. 
You know what I mean? That I could just, you know, Google and Gaga and that, you know, but, but Prabhupada points out so nicely, he says that, um, and because she was a demon, this is from the purpose, it was impossible for her to know that the Supreme Lord, even though playing the part of, the, of a baby, was none, was no one less than the same person, Supreme Personality of Godhead. And his value as the Supreme Lord did not diminish upon his becoming a baby to please his devotee, Yasoda. And then this is the sentence. The Lord may assume any the form of a baby or a shape other than that of a human being, but it doesn't make the slightest difference. He is always the same supreme. That's so uh, clear. Srila Prabhupada, he's clearly pointing this out, that the Supreme Lord, yes, he is the most powerful, and he's always powerful, and no matter what shape he takes. He's always, and so then we can realize that we also have that special, supreme, powerful Lord within our hearts also. He's there as the super soul and he's guiding us with this very soft voice, guiding us to his lotus feet. And sometimes in our lives, we might experience a louder voice of the Lord, you know, and more, more, um, direct is the word or more obvious direction by the Lord. And sometimes if we're for various reasons, some reason might be distraction. If we're distracted, then when the Lord's giving his advice, we're not hearing it so clearly, but anyway, it's there. He's there within our hearts and we're never disconnected. Never. We are disconnected in the sense of our consciousness. Our consciousness might feel disconnected or feel distracted or whatever be yeah turned away but we are never even though our consciousness might be we are never disconnected from the supreme lord and it's there's always the chance to reconnect again and that's why we that's what one of the reasons why we do our 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 process of sadhana is a daily thing Whatever it is, your habits that you're into, it's a daily thing. We take vows when, on initiation of we're going to chant 16 rounds of the Hare Krishna Ma Mantra daily. And some days it's a lot easier and clear and enlivening. And some days it's a lot more of a challenge. But because there's the vow to do that, we have the that gives us spiritual strength. It gives us the spiritual strength to... Oh, what's the word um, to not be so distracted by the unlimited distractions that the mind um, presents to us, that it gives us the strength to connect with the Lord who's there in our hearts. So, and this is this word, um, Sarva Rasa Sar, there's another phrase, but that's one of the phrases that Krishna is concerned with the essence that's mentioned in this in the previous pastime of Bali Maharaj that Krishna is looking for the essence of a devotee's heart and consciousness so and he's mm, he's trying to direct us that essence our essential or uh, spiritual consciousness to his lotus feet and that's what he, so uh, yes, and we should try to mold our lives, et cetera, et cetera, in a way that's pleasing to him. But even sometimes when it seems impossible for this circumstance or that circumstance to actually do all the things that we want to do in the Lord's service, just to have the desire, just having the desire, Prabhupada explains that in the Bhagavad Gita, just having the desire to be able to do those things and not being resentful. Let's, you know, in the 12th chapter, when Krishna says, always think of me. And if you can't always think of me, then do, then follow the process of bhakti yoga. If you can't follow the practice of bhakti yoga, then do this, then study, then give in charity, then do so many things and at least do something. And then gradually you'll be elevated to be able to what? Always think of Krishna. So, um, but back to the point of the essence, even we might not be able to do all, 
do that or many of the things listed there. But still, if we have the desire to do that, just cultivate the desire, because by cultivating that desire to serve the Lord more purely, more with genuine love, then the Lord, who is what? Who is the Anumanta, Upadrastra and Anumanta. He's the overseer and the permitter. He'll, 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 cultivate, he'll arrange mystically, however, he'll arrange mystic circumstances that um, we'll be able to cultivate those things. So I, I would like to see if there's questions, comments, or if some feedback, what struck you about the verse or, or maybe some of the things in the purport and we could have some discussion. Any discussion? Ladini, do you have any discussion points you'd like to bring up? Well, <laughs> Uh, right. Like, I think it's interesting that, like, I mean, from the external point of view, it seems that Bali Maharaj, who is giving everything to the Lord, is punished. Yeah. Whereas Putana, who is coming to kill the Lord, is yeah. getting the same uh, benediction as a mother. That's an interesting point. Thanks for bringing it up. It seems like that. It's true. From the external point of the Lord, Bali Maharaj really got the sauce, you could say. You know, he really got a dish of hot sauce. But actually, then, and it's a story, too, that I had to read quite a few times over and over again to get the, the thread of the mercy and see the mercy that was given to Bali Maharaj. Because Obviously, it, the story doesn't end there, just with him being tied up with the ropes of Varuna. Actually, and that's our, our Krishna, he's unlimitedly smart. <laughs> and therefore, what, why, is, why did he do that? One of the reasons why he did that to Bali Maharaj was particularly to demonstrate the qualities of devotees to demonstrate how determined they are to serve the Lord under any circumstance, to demonstrate the, 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 mm, the noble character of a devotee. Because otherwise you wouldn't have known that about Bali. You would have just think he was a, you know, a conquering demon, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. But then you see that how he's, he, he immediately accepts his position as an offender, even though technically speaking, Krishna was a cheater, but Prabhupada says that Bali agreed to be cheated by the Lord. Because why? Because he saw it was the Supreme Lord. What a better circumstance. It wasn't, probably wasn't on his um, to-do list that day, but still Krishna put it there and he got to say, oh, this is the Supreme Lord coming to take everything away. How wonderful. So that, and, and, and then where does that put Bali Maharaj? Gives him eternal fame. He just wasn't some great king lost in the um, obliviation of oblivion of time, but he's a, he's a Mahajan, elevated. And there's Krishna um, standing at his door, guarding his, his, his kingdom. And even once when Ravana tried to conquer Bali Maharaj, however that is, I can't figure it out in the cycle of time, but it's, it's there in the Bhagavatam in the purport that Bali, um, Ravana, when he came to the door, was kicked away by Vamana with this, with this toe. <laughs> Out of here, you're not coming in. And, you know, there he was, gone. Casey, good morning. Hare Krishna. Good morning. Hare Krishna. I don't know if this is much of a discussion, but I just really liked the point that you made that Krishna is even the strength of our endeavor. Yeah. Okay. What, what strikes you about that? Um... I think it was, I mean, just applying it to my life, you know, I was like getting really excited about all the people I felt I was able to <laughs> enroll for the foundation. Uh -huh. <laughs> like the min and the minute I got excited about it, like people stopped registering. <laughs> <laughs> but you were still the instrument, you're still the instrument, you know? Yeah, but I was feeling like it was so directly connected because I had a conversation with someone and then that person registered. I felt like it was so directly connected yeah, to me. Yeah. And then um, and then a couple people came, like people that I don't know at all. And 
so then yeah I was just appreciating that that felt like a really nice summary of that lesson I learned it, it's interesting isn't it the little layers of lessons and the nuances of the lessons that we learn you no know? and excuse me for saying this but in all honesty you probably haven't really learned that lesson just yet either but you got to sure. get it. you know what i mean <laughs> like it's, it's an ongoing lesson and it's an actually actually it's the whole reason that we're here in the material world because we think by our endeavor we can become happy and now that we've kind of lined up uh with krishna's krishna's with you know krishna philosophy we see oh it's not just by my endeavor but still we're thinking mm -hmm. and you know whatever this that's a discussion you know it's still the endeavor has to be there and krishna's mercy has to be there and that's why we're always looking towards krishna's mercy but on the strength of krishna's mercy anything can happen jai thanks for that any other comments or or thoughts or anything you'd like to share Yes, Malin. If nobody else wants to share. So yeah. far, they're not, it's not so lighting up. I, I really appreciate your class. I feel it's very supportive and uh, you know, encouraging, encouraging, and like Prabhupada's point that he make, like, yeah, like, like, uh, even if, you know, we, there is some hope for us. Yeah. Even if we pretend. Yeah. And I really like that part. Like, <clears throat> there is some hope, like, Okay, we may do our chapa, we may do our getting up in the morning, we may do our reading, we may do all that. And still, oh, I, I'm not in love with Krishna. I'm not like running on the ground in separation to Krishna. It's just not there. And, uh, but then, you know, by the grace of Srila Prabhupada, and that's really important, he knows yeah. that let's say, I'm going to take them to the level where they pretend, and I know it's in, because he's a friend of Krishna. Yes, yes. He's a friend of Krishna. I say, okay, I will take them there. And Krishna is so merciful with yeah. pretend now. Yeah. Because Prabhupada speaks about pretenders pastimes so much. Yeah. You know, in so many places, so many of his um, purports, so many of his classes. So, it, you know, he had quite a bit like, we are, we are, we are like Putana, we want to kill Krishna. We want to put ourselves in the center and we want to kill Krishna. Mm -hmm. Krishna, no way. No way that he's the most beautiful, the most knowledgeable, the most powerful, the most renounced, the most beautiful. No, 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 no. We want to kill that because I want all that. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciated that. And um, yeah, and I was thinking about Bali Maharaj and what you said about Bali Maharaj. And I was thinking like, my remembrance, you know, also I read it a few times because I, the first time I read that, I felt it was so unfair. Just <laughs> exactly, unfair. exactly. Like, why? I don't understand. Right. Like, all that. Right. But after I became like, well, Bali Maharaj is in ecstasy when he got a, 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 a completely wrote by Krishna. Mm -hmm. He's in ecstasy. Mm -hmm. Putana is not in ecstasy when Krishna is so, That's another point. Just to so, remember. Okay. So, so After. your breasts. Yeah. Because Putana gets, you know, get yeah. more yeah. heavily than Bali Maharaj. Yeah. Because she gets uh, a life there being taken out of her breast. That's yeah. that's a heavy punishment. In if we if we want to look at that, yeah. the external of the superficial of the material conception, what well, Putana got it worse than, than Bali. He got, he got, you know, tired with Bauli and she got her life there to be stuck out of her breast. And she was screaming. She was screaming in agony. Yeah. Good point. And, and I was thinking, like thinking of Bali Maharaj, is that, you know, Bali Maharaj was a demon. He was born in the demon family and he was a king in the demon dynasty and he had conquered all the demigods and he had conquered all the universe. So I can imagine that maybe there was some guilt, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe a desire, you know, I'm just conjecturing here, a really deep desire to be free from that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because we also like have our own little yeah, good point. skeleton in a closet of acting in a demoniac way or being in part of the demon families. And then if we know like, if we are in advanced enough, like Bali was, after surrendering completely to Krishna, 
if Krishna does something to us, we can feel that ecstasy, like, yes, do it, you know, like, yeah. you know, like punish me. Oh, I, want, yeah. I want that karma to be yeah. taken away. Yeah. I want all of that to yeah. be taken away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good so that's what came yeah. to me. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Damayanti, you're next, but I just want to say thing, one thing before you start, because I'm going to forget, that's why. Um, Okay, I almost forgot it already. It was something about Putina. About oh, Putina. Pat, Putina being chastised. So uh, our devotee made this point, and I thought it was a really good point. He said, when, um, when Putina was chastised by Krishna, people didn't see that. I mean, we're reading it now, 5,000 years later in Srimad Bhagavatam, that Putina was chastised and then elevated to the position of mother. But then when it was happening, they just saw a dead body on the ground, you know, 12 miles long. Do you know that when Putina fell, that she 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 had taken her original shape and she was so long that she had knocked down some trees in Kamsa's courtyard. No, yeah, Kamsa, yeah, in wow. 12 wow. miles away in Matura, yeah. Wow. And then, the, and then the, some Vajabasis, they chopped her up and then they noticed that she smelled really good when they burned her. But aside from that, that's as far as seeing, that's all uh, understanding, that's all they understood about her. But now, through the grace of Sukadev Goswami, et cetera, et cetera, we're hearing that Putana was elevated. Whereas the difference with Lord Chaitanya, when Lord Chaitanya um, uh, saved Jagai and Madhai, everyone could see how they were transformed. Mm -hmm. They were literally in front of their eyes, transformed from that demoniac mentality, you know, to um, humble, extremely humble, and loving devotees of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just a little point I want to mention. Yeah. Okay, Damayanti Prabhu, what would you like to add? Hare Krishna. Can you Hare Krishna. Um, thank you for the class. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about um, how Krishna, my experience and also aligns with the philosophy in the class today, how Krishna really just especially wants that transformation of consciousness. And um, I had the experience this week where, well, the last few weeks, I just felt like a lot of like mode of passion. And I was thinking that I was the, the real doer. I was the one making things happen. And I was like really attached to outcomes as well. <laughs> and um, so I was really, really, really gripped, gripped by the mode of passion. And um, not that I'm not now, but anyway, so much was not working. And I was experiencing, I'm experiencing so many challenges that I finally paused to say one is should i even do this endeavor is there some sort of indication to not even do the endeavor you know or is my whole approach just yes and, and in fact i was like yes my approach is devoid of krishna consciousness and you know i just paused to had and i had like garuda my husband garuda and i had like a big pause and check-in about a joint lots of joint projects and efforts and challenges and breakdowns and ideas. And we just checked in and it was like, what is the point of what we're doing? And what's the point of our life? And where are we like reevaluate, you know, just a recheck in about yeah, like, yeah. what really matters. And I'll, I just want to add one, finish this little bit and to say something that happened, but um, what happened was like, well, you know, we need to, we particularly feel called to do more Sankirtan. And um, we tried to go out once and it rained, there was no one to, there was no one to really serve. And we, so that was canceled. And then the last few weeks we wanted to go, but it, we don't have a vehicle that will drive all four of us and our family. And we don't really leave our children home for hours yet, just to go the two of us. And I'm not, I'm not ready to go alone. I'm waiting for the vehicle to fix. And anyway, but we haven't been able to go, but, but, but it was like a re commitment to let's make sure that St. Kirtan goes on our calendar. Um, and we reestablished that commitment, even though we, and even though we haven't even gone, um, this like really large blessing came our way a few days ago. And I was like, why? Like we barely deserve it we barely and like the only oh, I, the first thing I thought was the only thing we did was say we want to go do Sankirtan we didn't even do it <laughs> mm -hmm. like we can't even go we, we wish we could go this Sunday but we still don't have a vehicle um 
I just thought, wow, Krishna just wants that transformation of consciousness. I mean, even just the desire to do devotional service is, I, it moves energy around, you know, like it, it moves things around possibly sometimes in your favor, apparently. I don't know. So it was my experience, like a confirmation that it's yeah. the consciousness and the re and what do we center on in our life and it, the externals, whether we go for the goal or we drop the goal, it kind of doesn't really matter. So yeah. I just thought I'd share. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's very practical. And that's what we want to see the practical application of the, you know, the philosophy that we're, um, you know, pontificating on <laughs> so thank you that was very nice yeah and, and and that's the thing i often and i perhaps i mentioned this but anyway i often think of the <clears throat> there's a diorama of Srila Prabhupada in Vrindavan where Prabhupada's um walking up the gangplank to get onto the Jaladuta and he's just there and he's got his little simple little teeny briefcase in his hand and he's got his cane i believe and he's got his chatter over his shoulder and he's walking up the gangplank and his head is just high, high. his head and his vision is just high and he's just got this calm confident you know mood about him i'm gonna do this for krishna whatever happens it's for him Success, failure, that it wasn't like worried, what am I, you know, anyway, it was just, I'm doing this for Krishna. So similarly, we can have, we can practice, we can try to remember, I'm going to make that endeavor for, uh, for, for Krishna's pleasure. And that's the success. <laughs> we are accustomed to uh, judging success by the external features, but, you know, the real success is our turning our consciousness in loving dependence um, to and, and desire to serve him. That's the success of our lives. And we're thinking it, we're, you know, whatever, whatever. There's subtleties to that because we still have to make our endeavor, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, the real success in our life is that we're um, turning towards Krishna like that. Yeah. And I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm thinking, wow, I wasn't even thinking of that. So I must be something that I need to hear. So thank you for, <laughs> thank you for bringing that up. So, any, um, any other points that you want to discuss? Because I am. Yeah, I really, I really like what Diamond just pointed out from your class is that, you know, we may not be there or we may not feel capable or we may not have the situation, whatever, but the, the meditation on the service, like Damianti, she was, she's clear, I'm going on Sankatan, I yeah. want to do Sankatan, I want to distribute Shia Prabhupada's books, yeah. and that's meditation, yeah. and that meditation is what Krishna receives that, Lord Chaitanya receives that, Shia Prabhupada is so happy with that meditation, yeah. Yeah. and then from that meditation, we find so many opportunities yeah. to distribute pressure, to yeah. distribute yeah. books, to if we have the desire, yeah. it, 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 it comes. Yeah. And then if Krishna wants us to do that, he's going to send so much abundance. Yeah. Yes, continue to do that. Yeah. Eight hours a day, do Sankirtan. And you're going to be the, the most prosperous person in Alachua, Florida. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, actually, it, it, it's so true. And this is just another little addition to what you're saying or a little nuance of it is by that meditation on that service, you'll find, mark my word, you'll find that there'll be ways that you'll be able to execute that sankirtan that you're not thinking of now. Mm -hmm. You know, the opportunity, just like, and, uh, and this is not to say that you don't need a vehicle that fits all four people and your kids and everything, but, but perhaps there's a solution, and I, I find this a lot, personally there's a solution right in front of my face that i don't see as the solution until a certain i have to you know dust off a lot of the dust that's in the head and then you say, oh it's right there and that came that understanding came from krishna oh yeah try this or do that or whatever so so when we when we drive through La Crosse and we just hear the Hare krishna mantra vibrating we could think oh that's damayanta she's on her porch and she's doing sankirtan <laughs> <laughs> Or who knows what. 
Anyway, thank you. Anything else? Cause, okay. Okay, thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day today, remembering the Lord and his merciful mm, pulling of us back to his lotus feet. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Go Brahmanandi. Hari Hari Bo. Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Rama. Thank you, dear Mother Nanda. Hare Krishna. Thank you all for your patience and acceptance. And encouragement. Hi, Bal Lakshmi Priya. Nice to see you there. Hi, Bal Devon. Hi, and, Krishna, thank and you. everybody, and Rukmini and Kim and everybody. Hari Ran. Hari Ran.